wow, wow. Well, when I walked in, because, you know, I'm in the choir, when I walked in and the choir was singing the praise team, oh, my gosh, the energy, you can't believe, well, you're out there who are there, the energy just filling, just filling. Ah, this energy of God, this energy of love of God, yes. how much we love God, how much we love God, and how that transforms us, yes. how that transforms us. And this song, Wait on the Lord, I often know for myself, and I'm supposing for others as well, is that we go through life, and you know, life just is like that. You know, it just is. I haven't found it to be any other way. <laughs> but when we're down, if we're waiting on the Lord, if we know that God is there, and that it's in God's time, it's in God's <clears throat> hands, that we have that faith, that we have that trust. And that is what we're doing. We're, build, we're nurturing, we're building that within ourselves yes. with everything, every step we take. Mm -hmm. And I want to start by pointing out these things. I know that, that some of our practitioners have them on. Here they are around, back there. That when you see someone wearing one of these and you need to pray, you just pull them aside and they'll pray with you just like that. You say, I need prayer. And you can come over here afterwards. This is how we transform. Because we stand together. We stand together as this community of faith. And if you're new to the community, if you're going through hard times, we stand with you. We stand with you. That is our promise. It's too big. Because <laughs> it is. <laughs> to, to transform is to change, and it's like, oh my gosh. And then I get little get messages in the shower sometimes. I don't know, that flow of water. And it, it, it just simply came down to that we are here, that we are here as our spiritual beings living in these physical bodies, that we are here to transform the fear of this earthly plane to love. That we are to bring the light into the dark places. And we do that through building our trust. We do that through just stepping off the edge of the cliff and saying, I can do this. I can step out in faith. I can see a new way. And I will call others to help me along this journey. Those who believe. Those who know. For to live this life, to live this life in faith and in God is like no other. That the material plane, we are not here to buy cars. <laughs> That's not why we're here. We're not here to buy homes. We're not here to go on luxury vacations, even though my husband and I did go camping and it was marvelous. We need those breaks <laughs> of being in nature. But that's not why we're here. That's not why we're here, especially those of you who are in this room now or watching and listening. You get it, that the, the things of the world, the, the, the things outside that we read in the newspaper, that yes, those are happening in places in consciousness, but we have the power to have that consciousness within ourselves that says, I know, I know that whatever's going on out there, it's just a call for a prayer. It's just a call for love. That's all it is. Yes, yes. And that's what we're here to do. And I have to tell you that I had gone through so many things and brought so many things that I was going to talk about today, and I haven't talked about maybe one of them, maybe. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, here I am. <laughs> Giving it to God. <laughs> but there is a reason. One of the reasons that I'm here on earth is to heal myself, right? And in doing so, 
I can sh share that with others. And my emotional being for so many years has been, Wah! you know, just like a, it's taken me away. It's I've got confused. And so I have been brought to this place of, I need to heal my emotions. Because, you know, with, with new thought, you think, oh, it's a new thought. But it's also emotions, right? Yes. Jeez, you know, you're not just your thoughts. You're not just your body. You're not just, you are all of it, body, mind, heart, and spirit. So I'm going to share a story with you. I thought about this. I thought, oh, it's kind of embarrassing, but okay. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was about four years ago. It was during a choir rehearsal. So some of you here will probably remember, and hopefully you think of me kindly. <laughs> and there were, there were, it was when Laura Cash Hogren was the director. And there were some of our practitioners and choir members who had been sick for, I thought, way too long. That was, uh, you know, wait on the Lord. I thought it was too long. But I wanted to, there was something about that we have this power in any group in Inner Light when we come together. And this choir is such a powerful group. If you, if you love to sing and you want to join us, please do. It is transformational, <laughs> truly transformational. And as I was standing up here, there were these faces, and they just didn't seem very energized, and everybody was just kind of in their chairs. And, and I was calling forth that we needed to pray for these people, and I wasn't feeling energy. And so I started, probably right about here, stomping my feet. I was <laughs> stomping my feet, and I was just like trying to get things rolling. And, um, but then I have to give you a little uh, background on myself, I am notoriously uh, used to be an introvert and not wanting to be seen because I would embarrass myself or do something stupid and all those sort of things. And stop my, but I saw my feet. So I went home and I laid down on my bed and I felt this emotion of shame in my body. And it was huge. I wanted to do anything to get away from it. But I had also been working with an emotion of depression before and in other ways. And so rather than I wanted to call Laura, I wanted to call Laura, Laura, am I OK? I so desperately wanted to. But I knew it wouldn't do any good. Because it was here, here where the pain was, here where the shame was. And so I laid on my bed. And I stayed with this pain of shame. It was hard. It hurt. But I stayed with it. I did some breathing. Tried to get out of the story. You know that, get out of the story. Just be right here. And after a while, it passed. But it burned. Because I've had that inside of me, where we are energy, that's who we are is energy. I had that inside of me for years, since a child. So rather than running away from that feeling inside of me that had caused me to do all sorts of wacky things, right? Because when... Oh, that's my husband, he's taking pictures. <laughs> Quietly, dear. <laughs> So I stayed with it, and I got through it. And the, the way I could explain it was that it burned through me. We have to feel in order to heal. We have to feel without judgment without saying, I'm a bad person because I feel shame. I'm a bad person because, yeah, I did something, I did something bad. We're here to heal. Yes. We are here to transform this fear, this shame, this guilt, all of these stories that we carry in our body. 
because they are in our physical, energetic bodies. When we get triggered, boy, boom, there it is, right? <laughs> and it's like, where did that come from? Well, it's probably been there a really long time. Yeah, yeah. So to feel, to feel what's going on. And to love yourself. I have the practice, it's called tapping or EFT, emotional freedom techniques. And it's about tapping on your meridian points because we are physical beings and the emotions do live in our bodies. And this helps to release the emotions. And there's a called a setup statement, even though. And with that, even though you can sit, put anything after it, even though uh, such and such has been mean to me, even though I don't like myself right now, even though this happened to me when I was a child, even though, whatever it is. And then the other part of the statement is, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Because we're separating out the truth of who we are. We are God's divine children. Yeah. This is who we are. And this has been happening. And I've been raised to think that I'm bad. I've been raised to think that, that this, I'm not a good person, that I do bad things, whatever it is your story is. But we're taking them apart and we're saying, I am a divine child of God and I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Because we can't go out into that world and change out there until we've changed in here. There's a, a Bible, uh, a parable that came to me the other day that I used to just love as a child because I could so visualize it. And it is you cannot remove the splinter from your neighbor's eye until you remove the log from your own. <laughs> it's in the book of Matthew and Luke. I found it in two books. But you cannot go out there and say, oh, this needs to change, that needs to change, that's no good. You know, you, well, you can, but it's not, it's not in the energy, it's not in the flow of love, of life. It's just going to cause more constriction, more, more turmoil. But when you look inside to go within, I loved... Um, Last week's speaker, remind me, Lita, Lita, she was great. She said things, I wrote down some of the things that she said, and I was like, yeah, I'll be talking about that too, yeah. <laughs> We're just flowing through with the message. <laughs> but it begins within. It begins within. The place in your heart, finding that heart, that our hearts are pure and good. And we've been given a job here on this earth to heal, to heal, to feel, so that we can heal. It's pretty simple, actually, when you think about it. And we have this God presence that I love the presence. Joel Goldsmith calls, calls the God spirit presence the presence. This presence is everywhere. That all we need to do is recognize. All we need to do is step into it. To look inside. To look at your neighbors. I spend a lot of time in this community, and there's reason I do. <laughs> Everywhere I go, everyone I speak with has these words of wisdom has this place inside of them that is so holy and gracious. This is, this is a divine community. I was telling someone yesterday that I found my place. And I've been here, I think, nine years now. Yeah. Don't get tired. 
Wait on the Lord. Don't get weary. Wait on the Lord. Don't be discouraged. Wait on the Lord. I spoke, I think, last fall sometimes, and last time, and I shared about uh, one of my sons, and he's been living with us for almost a year. It's going on. And he was in a bad place. He's been an alcoholic since he was a teenager, and his life got to the point where it was death or prison. And we pulled him in. And having these spiritual principles, having this faith, waiting on the Lord, knowing that there is a divine arc to his healing, and that I can have faith that he is on his journey. And I also go to al just so you know, because <laughs> that's a wonderful place. Boy, they, they, I don't know who came first, but they have these spiritual principles that we use here as well. And I see him growing, I see him falling, but always I know that his consciousness is changing. That even though he might fall again, he's in a different place in his consciousness. And I'm reflecting that to him My husband's reflecting that to him as much as we can. And just through the power of love. Just love. (sighs) Mm. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I came, um, I went to a healer a while ago. And what came out of it was that, um, that I had an ex-husband in this lifetime that we were married for 30 years. And it took 30 years until I woke up enough to say, done. <laughs> but that in the last lifetime, he was my father. And for me to live in that kind of non-acceptance and non-love and it just I'm yeah I have a tender heart as we all do (laughs) and so in this lifetime I said I would not come back unless I had loving parents and I did in this lifetime so that it took me a mere 30 years to whatever it was that I was here to learn to do to break away and to see, to see clearly rather than to be in it. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to see clearly for you when you cannot see clearly for yourselves. We are here to call out the truth, this big T truth that you, we, are all here to do great things. That we are here to be this love. To be this faith, this peace, this joy, this courage. In the song, be be courageous. That we are here to be this. And I know that all of you are. (laughs) And wherever you are in your journey, just keep moving forward. Keep moving towards God. Keep moving towards love. Loving and accepting. Loving and accepting ourselves. There's a Gaelic blessing that I have. I actually loved it so much that I did a painting of it. And I brought it down last night. I thought, oh. And this blessing is, may you have the commitment to heal. May you have the commitment to heal what has hurt you. May you allow 
yourself to come closer to it. And in the end, become one. Yes. May you have the commitment to heal what has hurt you. Allow, and now I'm getting mixed up about it. Hang on. May you have the commitment to heal you, to heal what has hurt you. May you allow it to come closer to you. And in the end, become one. Reverend Deborah says the only thing we need to heal is the sense of separation. And the other day I was sharing in that class the other night, I got it. I, the, the embodiment of it was like, oh, here. <laughs> this sense of separation. These words that we think, these pains that we have, what you love will reveal its secrets to you. What you love enough will reveal its secrets to you. Isn't it worth it to love yourselves in this lifetime? Yes. Yeah, you're, you're the ones that you came in with you, you're here the whole time, you go out with you. <laughs> what the heck? Why not? Yes. It's worth the investment. Yes. It is worth the investment. Yes. <laughs> Thomas. Absolutely. <laughs> so as I grew up, if God had to say something through you, he laid it on your heart to say it. And God has laid something on my heart to say today. Because Thank you. Because he spoke about wisdom. Yes. He spoke about parents. He talked about trials and tribulations. He talked about transformation. See, my pops always told me, he said, you only have to do what you have to do until you don't have to do that thing it's anymore. Okay. Yeah. I'll say it again. You only have no, wait, to wait, wait, wait. what you have to do until you don't have to do that thing anymore. And that's transformation. Yeah. See, that's when you lay down what you think that you have Is it and you allow God to use what God has. Yeah. That's when you step out of the way and that's when God comes through and makes a way that seems like no way. And I know that I am here today because of what they did for their son. Because my mom has prayed for me her entire life. My mom has had cancer four times and has recovered from it all, but left her blind. But she has not lost her sense of faith, mm -hmm. her, her sense of knowing. I was home about a year ago, and I said, Mom, I'm just a, I, had to, I have to be honest with you. I'm afraid that you're going to leave this earth, and I won't be here to hold you. I'm the youngest of five. And she said, oh, honey, don't worry. I've already prayed. God's got that all under control. All five of you are going to be here when I pass this earth. Because I'm going to heaven. I'm going to meet my maker up there. I'm going to stand beside your father, and we're going to be able to sing in harmony for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, you see, my mama knows, and she knows that she knows. And you're talking about holding the vision, about why you're here in this community. This community helped me through a really tough time and helped me through this practitioner program we have, allowed me to see things that I couldn't see. Because, see, I don't believe there's anything as manifestation. See, I believe that we only raise our conscious awareness, and then we see what was already there. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to have this community. I'm so grateful to have those ones who have shown me love when I didn't think love was possible. I didn't think I was lovable for a long time. And now I know that through it all, I've learned to trust. Thank you. Yes, Yasmina. We're doing church up in here. I have we are. Taj, Taj. Taj, do we have the microphones on? Yay. Are the microphones on? Woo, there's a trap. 
Okay, all right. Ah. Thank you, Chris. I haven't been, many of you know, I haven't been coming here for a long time since I became a practitioner. I've been church hopping, going wherever spirit leads me. I came here today to hear you. I don't know how much time you have more, but everybody doesn't know who you are and they don't know what you've been through. And I came here because I know you know something. This woman, if anybody knows something about healing, she does. So before you get off that stage, I want you to tell us what you know. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> All right. So, you know, you know those 30 years I was talking about? Stress and not being heard, not being seen, da 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 So by the time I left, which was due to the, the, my love of my family at the time of my father's passing, my sisters and I came together and something just went, whoa, my heart opened. <laughs> FYI, when your heart opens, you got no choice. You're just doing something else. <sighs> but through that time, my body was holding and getting tighter because I was having to protect myself. And I developed, it had, the, the name of it is spasmodic torticollis or a cervical dystonia. And my body was so turned over and twisted that when I would come to church, because I came to church, you know? I came to church through all this. I went through the practitioner program through all of this. I just kept coming. I had this cushion behind me that I could push up against to try to hold myself up as much as I could. And a lot of times I just lay down on the ground, on the carpet. I just lay down and back. And I knew that even if I wasn't able to hear, because when your body's going wacko, you can't hear so good, I knew that I would get that message when I needed it. Yes. That I could hear what I could hear and that that was enough. And I was here, and I kept going. And as I started healing, because I started loving myself, my question to the universe, boy, it was, it was right about the time that I started coming to Inner Light, was how do I love myself? And you know, the, the universe, God, it, it answers every request. Yes. Whatever you ask, God will provide. It's in God's timing, it's in God's way, and it's usually better than you could ever imagine. So then I started working with some of the practitioners here to start what we call, end up calling, is it the healing? Health and healing circle. And that's been going for five years, six years? Yeah, yeah, a long time. Jennifer and Jane are, are co-leading that now, yes. wherever Jane is. <sighs> to share this with others, to share that love and faith, and that it's not that it, our bodies might be doing things, but that we can heal, mm -hmm. we can become whole through this power of love through believing, through believing, our cells change all the time. That we have this ability, and to do it in a faith community, to pray together. I have got a whole big um, bookshelf full of books on healing, healing through faith, through the spirit. I, ju I just kept reading. <laughs> I love to read, FYI. I love to read those kind of books. <laughs> I'm always reading. I've got like five or six books now, and I have to, okay, I put a couple of them aside now, and a couple of them here. So the latest books that I'm reading, I haven't, I have this thing about sharing. It's kind of, kind of like when God said, touch, when Jesus said, touch me not, because he was, he was in, in transforming, transcending. 
that there's a state that you need to protect within yourself when you are in that. You don't go talking to people about your spiritual journey if they're not copacetic with it. You know, if it's not, they're not there to support you. You just keep it here. Unless you sh and then you share it with those around you that you know, understand, th know that, that they're walking that journey as well. And it popped into my head, so I'm going to share it. In fact, I shared it a little bit earlier when, when and during the uh, beginning over in the social hall where people, especially the choir, were sang around me. And it was like it was a band of angels. Seriously. And then I said that this seen, the seen angels and the unseen angels, that there is more. There is so much more than what we see with these eyes. That we are not alone. That all of you have all of your angels, your guardian angels, the angels you need. I, the other day I was driving down the freeway and I'm like, okay, driving angel, keep me safe, keep everybody safe, you know? It's like, call on him. Call on the Lord. Call on the angels. Yes. Call on all the helpers yes. that are part of this. And I have one book in particular that I love that, that talks about the, um, the burning violet fire. Ghanane and I have connected with that. And just the fire. This is your, your, your intuition. And to just imagine, this is, this is the light of transformation. Your, your, uh, your top chakra, what's it called? The crown, crown chakra. chakra, thank you. The crown chakra. That we have so much help. All you need to do is say, I need help. And what is right for you will appear. What's right for you. Everyone has their own journeys. And whatever is right for you, you ask and believe, so it shall be. So it shall be. <sighs> thank you for asking me to share that. And thank you, Thomas, for speaking what was on your heart. All right, let's just close our eyes here. Hmm. For it is in this place, God, in this body that we feel where we are sitting, where we are standing, that we take this breath, this divine breath, recognizing that God gave us life. And that we are simply here for you, God. We are simply here to do and to be all that we were created to do and to be. And that it is in this journey of when we awaken to why we are here and what we are here to do, that this joy this peace, this serenity can settle in because we don't have to be outside of ourselves looking anymore. For it is from within. Mm, this grace of God. I love the grace of God. It opens my heart to know that no matter what we think we've done, that the grace of God washes us clean. That we are made whole through this consciousness of love. This consciousness of love. There is nowhere that God is not, and for this I am so grateful. Wherever we are, whoever we come face to face with, if we get triggered, hallelujah, that's our place of healing. 
That is our place of healing. Thank you, God. When I hit those rough spots, show me, Lord, show me. What am I not seeing? What am I not seeing? What am I here to learn? What am I here to know? Because it is whatever we love, whatever we grow through, that is what we can see in others, and we can shine that light that we have in ourselves onto others, that light of faith, knowing that they too can move through this, that they too can come out the other side and know more and love more and trust more. Wherever you are, move from there. Don't worry about seeing other people in other places in their journeys. Your journey, where you are now, is sacred. It is sacred. And you also cannot move from where you are until you stand in where you are until you love and accept yourself right where you are. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for this time together. Thank you for this divine Sunday with singing and love and God and sharing and coming together. This is our divine path. Every step you take, every thought you have of love, of God, of being willing to surrender, to let go of your thoughts, these patterns of thoughts that we run over and over again. That's a clue. If we're having the same thought over and over again, it's time to stop and say, all right, God, I surrender this. Because if I'm thinking it, and it's just getting me in a rut, it is not your way. It is not your way. <sighs> mm, thank you, God. Thank you, Divine Spirit. Thank you, Holy Presence, for this community, for this consciousness, for these teachings, these principles, these spiritual qualities. For each person that I see today, for each person that I touch or that touches me, that we are one. truth that will set us free. Thanks be to you, O Lord. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you.